Uh, so up next, we have uh, James Foster from uh, Down Under in Australia. Uh, he is also an energy systems modeler, uh, but will not be talking about uh, energy systems modeling uh, in the next half an hour. Instead, uh, James has been working a lot on some of the, the jump documentation, uh, and he's going to kind of take us uh, hopefully on a tour of uh, through the different types of models you can you can solve and jump, and, and maybe through some of the newer things that we've been adding uh, over the last uh, wee while. So if you've missed anything, maybe now's a, a good chance to kind of catch up on some more work that we've been doing uh, in jump. Great, thanks for the introduction. James, uh, take it away. My fellow uh, Antipodian. Uh, so yeah, I'm privileged to, to be here. Um, I'm, I'm James Foster, I work for the Australian um, CSIRO, which is Australia's National Science Agency. Uh, but I'm here just talking about JUMP and not about my energy system modeling work. Um, so um, yes, you will have much to learn about, about JUMP, so I'm glad you're here. Um, this is a brilliant graphic that I think someone here produced, uh, which is, uh, what are we doing when we're doing um, jump, essentially? We're doing a reproducible uh, workflow. And where are we in this workflow? So uh, out of the data process, com com computa computing process, and the results and reporting process, we're here, right? We're in the decision model, we're right in the heart of things. Uh, and that's what's happening in jump. But more simply, um, if this is the, the, the pipeline of what's happening, uh, analytic data in, the algebraic modeling language is where jump is, the optimization model, and the solver solution algorithm, solver output. So that's, that's where we are in the, the computational pipeline. Uh, maybe I don't need to, sh to show this, but maybe it's also good for people that aren't so familiar. What is an algebraic modeling language generally? They're domain-specific languages. In this case, obviously, jump is a embedded um, domain-specific language within Julia. And they're descriptive, right? So it's all about describing what you want out of the model rather than um, being imperative and saying how you should solve the model. Uh, and the fun uh, as a modeler is model formulation. Um, and so Jump, is, Jump gives us the tools to do those interesting things and we've seen lots of examples. And hopefully when you uh, write Jump models, they're readable, they're also reducible and they have easily maintainable comp components as we saw in the last talk. Um, and hopefully some of the examples here will, will demonstrate that. Um, really, just if you don't come from an algebraic modeling background, what are, you, what are the components? We've got the objective function, we've got sets that organize the model, we've got parameters, which is a fixed, another word for fixed data that's, uh, then, that defines the model, and of course the decision variables are the things that are the unknowns, the unknown variables, and we have constraints and inequalities, and I'm going very fast, but I hopefully uh, this is, serves a ref reference point. Okay, so just to get us oriented, with jump, classic knapsack problem. Everyone uses this to get going. So what does it mean? We want to maximize a linear combination of so-called benefits. The, C, the CIs are the data of the problem that represents some sort of profit or benefit from a choice. We have a weighted sum with, that's within some budget B. The weights, WIs, um, correspond to sort of the, yeah, the, the, the weight of the, the choice of the, which we're making. And we constrain our decision variables to be zero and one. Um, and this is, uh, so I'll initially talk about the combinatorial examples in jump. So um, when, we are, when we say that a, a variable is in zero, the set zero or one, uh, we're saying that an item can either be included or excluded and there's nothing in between. So you know, do or do not, there is no try when it comes to binary variables. Um, so how does that look when you con convert that mathematical formulation into a jump problem. So there's a bit of boilerplate, uh, I guess you'd call it. You have to load the package using jump. You have to load a solver. Highs is the current uh, favorite uh, for a lot of examples in the documentation at the moment. And uh, of course, we have the data of the, those profits, those C, CIs, the weights, the Ws, and the capacity is that budget constraint. And so um, some, sometimes when you read a mathematical model, it's a bit backwards. So often we define the variables first and their constraints um, so we sort of read it from bottom up, and so that corresponds to the uh, variable declaration, uh, uh, defining our variables. We define the objective using the objective keyword, and we define the constraints using the at constraint keyword. Okay, and then we can optimize that and solve. 
Okay, and just in this whole process, what is, how do we find the solutions? Well, that whole process uh, gets us ready to hand off um, our model to a solver, which is essentially, you can think of it as the solution algorithm. Um, why is that great? Because we delegate all the responsibility for numerical implementation, precisions, tolerances, and so on to that solver. And um, the great thing is we can swap out solvers using Jump. We can also tune our solvers for particular use cases to make them more efficient on particular problem classes. And you can think of the algebraic modeling language as somehow compiling, in a very loose sense, the model down to exactly the data inputs that the solver needs in order to run. But we don't have to worry about that. So this is, this is the magic of algebraic modeling languages. Uh, a bunch of, bunch more stuff about finding solutions. Actually, I'm not going to really go into this. Um, but um, just to emphasize that if you're not familiar with this, different, more effective solvers can be used if you find that the solver that you're currently using isn't great. Maybe it's better for your problem class. Maybe it's um, had more development time. Uh, for instance, commercial solvers sometimes are much more efficient than other, other types. Okay, so let's do a quick tour of examples. In the jump docs, um, you might just think maybe the docs are, uh, help you understand some of the syntax. Well, actually, there's a whole bunch of examples in there that you, I, I find interesting. Hopefully, you will find interesting that you'll be inspired after this talk to go have a look at. So I'm going to first divide it into the combinatorial types, and there's some continuous types. There's some more um, specific applications, and I'm going to talk about recent additions and extensions as well. So um, this is the classic, in a sense, another classic combinatorial problem, which is the N Queens problem. And um, I guess I like this. Uh, often people use this as examples when they're demonstrating certain systems. It's, it's really um, intuitive, I think, and quite simple, as if you imagine if you have a chessboard and you have, the, have to place, in this case, eight by eight chessboard, the standard one with eight queens that you need to place on that chessboard, and you have to place them in a way that no queen will attack another queen. Um, so we can write this entire problem quite succinctly uh, in jump. Um, the, the constraint that there is exactly um, one queen in a given row or column um, is essentially just the sum some constraints, you have to sum the, these decision variables. Uh, you can only choose one of them. Um, so we have two of those. And finally, we have a, um, two, two constraint declarations here that uh, within the loop that represent uh, the diagonals as well. So there's a nice correspondence here between the picture and what we're actually doing and the actual lines of code. And really, it's concise, right? It gives you just enough to describe the problem and no more. So I, I uh, enjoy that. And uh, if you optimize and then ask for the solution, uh, I find that even the, you know, the layout of the, the printing in Julia actually represents, looks a bit like a chessboard, and it actually shows you exactly what's happening. And if you notice, in fact, the solution is not the solution that's presented in the picture, um, but that's okay. What's happening here is that there's no objective, and if there's no objective, or well, even if there is, often you can have um, equivalent uh, so solutions, feasible solutions for the problem, that aren't the same thing. And just to plug that, I wrote a blog post that's on the Jump Dev site that actually just discusses this. And it, um, if you're interested in finding out how to access um, problems that have multiple feasible solutions, particularly in combi the combinatorial sense, um, have a look at that. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, of course, Sudoku, who can go past combinatorial problems without um, demonstrating that they can do Sudoku. So, uh, again, I'd just like to sort of say that, again, it's a concise representation of the Sudoku problem. Um, really, we're describing things as we want, um, as we sort of think of them intuitively, rather than imperatively describing how we go about solving the Sudoku. And uh, in this case, we're quite similar to the, to the end queens, where we're having constraints that represent rows, row constraints, column constraints, and also we need to represent the, um, the sub cells as well, the nine by nine subcells. And um, again, the solution prints, prints nicely. It looks a lot like how you'd represent it. And uh, um, you know, there are certain things here. There's some logic that we need to involve in this example where if we, uh, we are given certain cells, right, uh, that we need to enforce the fact that those, those cells are fixed, those, those particular entries are fixed, then we can use the fix keyword. Uh, in, in jump in order to s specify any um, variables that we, we require to be exactly equal to some, some, some given data. 
Okay, so this is the thing that sort of uh, I didn't know um, coming into coming from a more classical optimization background is um, I'm learning some of these things, this, this approach, because now um, Jump has a constraint programming toolkit, uh, which is pretty great. Uh, there's these, you might call them primitives of constraint programming that you can now use to be even more concise and representative of uh, the way you might think about the problem. And uh, I, won't, I won't read these out, but you can see that there's a whole, whole bunch of very useful and interesting constraint programming um, uh, primitives here. And here's the Sudoku problem again, written in the constraint programming style. And you can see it's, it's, even, it's even better, right? It's even, even tighter. It, I've used a larger font and everything. It, it fits really nicely. So uh, I recommend having a look at that. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't come from a constraint programming background, but I'm, I'm very impressed by, by how nicely this uh, represents exactly what you want to think, how you want to think about the problem. Uh, but let, lest I give you the impression that Jump is all about combinatorial problems, it's not at all. This is a, a, class, a classic, maybe it's, not, maybe it's not a classic example, but for people who've been around in Jump for a while, this is a, uh, the, the problem that we put, point to is an excellent example of a continuous um, problem. There's no, no binary variables or choices involved here, and uh, we can use uh, jump for uh, optimal control problems, uh, and it uh, composes nicely, as Julia does, with um, plotting and all sorts of um, uh, you know, interpolations, for instance. We're using this, this interpolations package in order to uh, work with the data. So that's another um, brilliant example. And um, there's this neat page if you've never heard of semi-definite programming, and I recommend checking this out. There's a bunch of very short and concise examples, some with pictures, um, that demonstrate what you can do with um, semi-definite programming. Um, you can do things in statistically related, uh, geometric uh, problems, um, Lovash numbers are related to uh, uh, things like information theory and uncertainty sets. Uh, just to give you a flavor of some of these simple semi-definite programming examples. Here's one, um, sort of this classical problem of embedding a, a graph metric in a uh, Euclidean space. It's essentially asking if you have this particular graph and the distances between the nodes have to respect the distances in the graph in this case. You're asking for three things, all being a distance of um, uh, two, so essentially away from each other, as well as a distance of one away from the, the, the middle node. Um, this is impossible by the sort of triangle inequality, but what you can do is um, solve an STP that approximates this and embeds the sort of best possible version of this within the Euclidean space. And so a very simple and short, again, concise, I, I would argue, formulation of this problem can be written um, in jump. Uh, another fun one is the ellipsoid approximation. Uh, if you have point clouds and we're asking to essentially summarize what does this point cloud look like in terms of its, uh, it's a synthetic data for this, this case, but what is it, sort of the, the geometry of the point cloud, and can we f make a best uh, ellipsoid fit rather than a linear fit? Uh, we're asking uh, this question, and so we turn this into, a, again, a semi-definite programming problem, and we use this uh, jump, jump set, which is the PSD cone, positive semi-definite cone, and, um, we can access some of the more obscure, one might argue, um, uh, sets as well. This is the root debt cone square set as well uh, to, to easily express this problem. And um, for instance, it generates this solution where it summarizes a very tight uh, ellipsoid fit around, around the data. Um, so Julia solved the two language problem, but Jump solved the, uh, the dual language problem. Uh, so uh, there's a recent, uh, I'm not sure how recent it is actually, a package dualization thing, well, at least I've become recently aware of it, uh, that um, is able to, to work with the dual, help, help, help you work with the dual of an uh, optimization problem much more easily. Um, and so uh, here's from the documentation. What does it do? It reformulates problems um, to meet the input requirements of solver, which um, can potentially be uh, solving this dual of, in this particular case, conic mo models, they can be much more efficient than solving the primal. So a very quick and rough sort of translation here is it's not always better, but in some cases it can be significantly better. So primal 
variables and constraints, and this would be the dual variables and constraints on a sort of transformed, automatically transformed model. The, the, don't look too closely. The, the count isn't exact, but it gives you a sense of some of the, the um, in some cases, you can get a, a better, uh, more efficient model as a result. Um, right, and so what was mentioned uh, in the state of jump talk, which was this new introduction of complex, uh, you can model directly with complex variables. So uh, there's quite an interesting uh, application that came in through the forum and that was um, subsequently written up by Oscar, which is quantum state discrimination. So uh, in quantum theory, as I understand it, um, just like in PowerFlow, um, sometimes it's much more convenient to work directly with complex numbers. Uh, and in, in this case, you can represent um, an estimation of quantum state. Uh, don't ask me any more questions about that using both uh, complex numbers and the um, complex version of the positive, positive semi-definite cone. So you can use that all in one to, to, write, um, to write this optimization model. And something I'm a bit more familiar with, which is um, as an energy system model, optimal power flow, here is an entire optimal power flow model written uh, on one slide um, by using complex, complex numbers um, directly without projecting the complex uh, variables themselves, in particular voltage variables, add into their real and imaginary components. Uh, you know, simple, simple network. I guess it's quite small, but it uh, still serves as an interesting example. And in this, we solve the nonlinear model in this case, and we also transform to a complex uh, semi-definite program relaxation of this model as well, and, and solve that with the Clarabel solver, which is uh, a new addition to the dependencies in the documentation. And uh, yeah, so just moving on to some other examples in the documentation here, there's nested optimization problems. Um, what are nested optimization problems, right? So we have an uh, upper and a lower level problem. So on the one, one hand, we have, uh, think of the x's as fixed in the lower level problem, and we're asking to solve, um, solve for this z, essentially, uh, based on, on in, the, in this lower level problem. And um, so that's represented, I'm not, I haven't written out what the, uh, if you, if you can imagine just writing out that as a constraint, uh, it's just a standard uh, Julia optimization problem. Uh, just write out the constraints and ob objectives and variables of that. That's inside that lo lower level function. And then um, the optimal value of that lower level function then forms um, a, essentially a term in the, uh, in the upper level problem. And we need to then solve this, this entire thing. So uh, there's, a, there's a very nice de detailed um, walkthrough of how to do those types of problems. Um, uh, and I would be remiss to talk about things that aren't necessarily in the jump documentation directly, but are extensions that you may or may not be aware of. So the um, uh, multi-objective optimization um, now lives in the multi-objective algorithms uh, package, um, the MOA package. Uh, there's a more extensive version of um, for, for bi-level bi optimization problems beyond that simple example in the bi-level jump. Uh, we've diffopt to differentiate through and then optimize, optimizing over a set of structurally param parameterized problems, differentiating through those parameters. Uh, if you, uh, par parametric opt interface to, um, to efficiently modify parameters in a problem, so key data and constants. Uh, Polyjump poly for um, polynomials as decision variables. We have um, Oscar's package SDDP for uh, multi stage stochastic optimization. And one that I think needs more love is piecewise linear opt uh, for model, um, modeling problems containing piecewise linear functions. Um, so uh, this is my, the last part of my talk, I guess, which is always pass on what you have learned. So how can you contribute to the documentation? So I'd like to maybe prompt you to, to contribute to the documentation and bring your experience and um, share what you have. Do you have an interesting example in your particular area? Um, can you simplify it in a manner that's, that's useful for a tutorial? Uh, maybe you can translate an article or a book chapter, or maybe you have an example model written in another modeling language that you can translate through. Uh, maybe you have an idea that demonstrates some of the more so-called obscure sets in the in jump, so power cones, maybe some geometric programming ideas. Um, so why should you do that? Right? So it, I mean, it's a great benefit to students, whoever those students are, whether they're just students of the language, or otherwise, um, maybe it will attract people working in 
that area, your area, to try jump if they can see that they can relate to that example. And in fact, the documentation examples that we have actually help with the, the, the jump co-testing, so it helps overall as well. Um, so uh, just to stir your imagination, this is a great book if you haven't, just get it out of your library, and then there's a whole bunch of chapters here on, these are all the examples that, of things that, I'm sorry. <laughs> That was, a, that was my computer telling me to have a break. All right, uh, <laughs> how embarrassing. All right, so these are all examples of things that we don't have, you know, that don't exist in the documentation yet. So maybe some of these, these applications would be, uh, would be great to include as documentations. All right, so um, what else can you do with a jump documentation? Well, actually it's a really good example of having, generating a documented based GitHub IO site. So, if you don't want to use Jump, just have a look at this, and there's some great examples if you want to generate your own docu documenter stuff. Um, read it, please, and then open an issue and pull request if there's any feedback you've got or parts that are unclear. Um, have a look at the one-page Jump API reference and then tell Oscar what you think about it, because um, he's open to changing it. Um, anything else? Uh, this is my wish list. Um, I wish you could have, I, I put this in, I guess, independently of what we talked about, of, of mentioned before in the session. I wish I could do this. So I'm doing this manually at the moment. So here's my tech and here's my actual sort of the, the, the code. I wish I could have tech doc strings that sort of work without me having to manually do that. Um, thanks. And uh, any questions or rebuttals to what I said? Be welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, so we have uh, a couple of minutes for questions, but I have a more logistical announcement. I have been informed that we're taking a photo at 12.30 sharp up on the lawn by the food trucks, so we might just have, say, one question uh, so we all have enough time to get up there and time for the photo. So any, uh, any questions from the audience? And then, uh, well, if not, then maybe we should... Um, so actually for the end queen problem, you can make it shorter. Okay. So even better with the... So you can assume that uh, it's actually, you just need a vector, not a matrix, because you can assign like uh, the, indices of, uh, the indices of uh, each variable as a, like the x coordinate or the y coordinate. So you can gain uh, even more and have a short term. Okay, we can shorten the end main problem. Uh, in fact, I enjoy vectorizing um, optimization problems if possible. So there, there you go. Please have a look at the documentation. If you find a nice vectorization equivalent, let us know and um, put an issue or a PR. And brilliant. Okay, great. So can I ask that you all uh, join me in thanking uh, James, but all of the speakers uh, in this session.